Let's go. You should always stay focused. You know what they say, right? Pressure bus pipes. And that's exactly what happened with the Los Angeles Clippers. That's what happened, guys. Pressure bus pipes. So we talked about this, right? I talked about it in the previous videos saying that you should never underestimate your opponent did or did not. I did. I hope you were there when I said it because I was there when I said it. If you underestimate your opponent, you're going to have a lot of surprises. Regardless how good you are, how great you are. Huh? That's exactly what happened to the Clippers. They came in, they took the lead, and then they took the foot off the gas pedal. And then surprise! Why? Because the Nuggets, they never took their foot off the gas pedal. Even though they were losing, they never lose sight on the goal, which was to win the series. And they did. Now, I don't care if you Kawhi or PJ-13 or Playoff PJ, whatever his name is, if you can't handle the heat in the damn kitchen, just get out. And guess what? You're out. So, all this to say, guys, when you step on that court, if you don't know what your job is, you have a serious problem. Matter of fact, important thing, jokes aside, if you, you always have to prepare yourself, guys. I mean, it's... I, I've been saying that. I'm still going to keep saying it. If you don't prepare yourself for ever, ever, for whatever situation you can possibly be in, when the situation is going to arrive, you're probably going to freeze and like be like, what's going on? The thing that, that, that hit me the most last night was when they, they, they took out Kawhi off the court the game was over, right? So he was on the bench and you had Paul George next to him. But the face that Kawhi he has, he had big eyes and he was like, it's like he, he was not understanding what was going on. So to me, it's like, I did, I did everything that I could. Did not. You cannot go in the fourth quarter and don't score a point. And you know, I've watched ESPN all day today and all the shows, Stephen A. Smith, Max Kellerman, and Kendrick Perkins and everybody say, the thing is, is that, that they didn't say is that the toughest thing to do when you are in the series, like best of seven, is to close the series. So if you're leading 3-1, the toughest thing you have to do is to get the fourth win it's the toughest why because if you have a team resilient just like the nuggets they're not going to give it to you that easy oh it's 4-1 it's in the bag it's not in the bag dog it's not they're going to come after you and you know what they did every single game so if you cannot close a series and you blow up leads you, you lead the game, 15, 20 points, and you cannot close. How are you going to win the series? And we're talking about mental toughness, right? Well, by letting Denver coming back, what the effect of that is that physically and mentally the Clippers were drained because to them they give everything that they could possibly give to win the game and the series 
couldn't do it. They couldn't do it. And because they couldn't do it, and seeing the other team coming back all the time, it's, it's, it's a recipe for disaster. Mentally speaking, your mental toughness is completely out to the window. Because right now, you're just questioning yourself, like, what should we do to win this game? How, how can we get these guys off the court? You start, you start doubting yourself. And when you start doubting, doubting yourself, it's catching up to you. It's not even fatigue. It's the doubt. The fear of losing game seven is starting to get to you. And when it gets to you, you can't play anymore. PG, PG shooting three points and it's hitting the backboard. What is it? It's not fatigue. Is that mentally speaking, he wasn't there anymore. He, he was completely out of it. So having those guys coming back completely mentally drained the Clippers. And that's what I that's why I keep saying, guys, if you don't put yourself in these shoes and train yourself to the best of your ability when you come to work out and put yourself in those situations, like I said, you you're down three. Fourth quarter, five seconds on the clock. You have to make the shot. Put yourself in that comfortable zone so that when you get in the real game, you already know what to do. We're not reinventing the wheel, guys. We're not. If you play a five on five, all right, you play a five on five, two, three games are rolling, and then you just try it, guys. Just scream. Guys, last game, game seven. And watch the reaction of the people on the court. Guys or girls, doesn't matter. But just watch the reaction. Some guys or some girls are going to be like, all right, let's go. And some people will be like, ooh, okay. Yeah, well, all right. Those two words are like a nightmare to a few. And the others, they'll be like, oh, it's on. That's mental, guys. That's mental. If you fear game seven, it's going to be tough for you because it's going, it will happen. It will happen that you're going to face a team resilient, strong. They don't understand the word quit. And they, they always down your throat. And next thing you know, you blank, you look left and right. You'd be like, oh, it's game seven. What are you going to do? All this to say, the next point, before I roll the video, I talked about it before, is that how important it is to play against your teammates, right? That's what happened in this video because uh, I played against my boys. So, Personally, I, I never liked it. I said it before. I told in the video, I said in the video last time that I, I was not really a fan of that, but I realized and I, and I understand how important it was. And Uncle Drew was always telling me, you should give you all against us. Don't be like too friendly because we're your boys. When you're on the court, if we play against you, give everything that you got so that when you're going to play against guys that you don't know, it's going to be automatic. All right, cool. So what happened on the tape, guys were there, we're shooting around, right, before we, we set up the teams, and then Uncle Drew was like, okay, so what's the team? And then Chaz, Chaz replied like, oh, it's it's me, you, and, and Batman Steve-O. So I turned around, I'm like, oh, I'm out of the team? I'm not playing with you guys? We're not, we're not playing three plus one? No? Oh, no, 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 it's us three, that's it. Fine. So I, I, Big Charles was there too. I'm like, all right, I'm going to play with Big Charles. You know? So obviously, yeah, you do feel like, okay, those are my teammates for, for like years. And then I'm being kicked out. Even though I, I understand it's only for the three on three. But somewhere I have to find some motivation to play. It's either I don't and I get my butt kicked all night. Or I'm like, you know what? All right, let's do it. So what happened? We lost the first game, right? 
So when you're going to what you're going to see is that we lost the game. I go get my ball and I walk away to the other to the other to the well, to the other court, well other court, to the other rim, right? So I go like shooting on the other side. At that moment when I picked up the picked up the ball and I'm walking away, something happened. I something's like switch in my head and I'm like Okay, it's either I get my ass kicked all day, all night, or I go out there and play like I don't know these guys. So suddenly I'm like, I don't know Batman Stevo, I don't know Chaz, I don't know Uncle Drew. I'm just gonna go at it and go at it hard and see what's gonna happen. And that's what I did. Because I wanted to prove a point, right? I wanted to prove Chaz that yo. That was a bad call, bro. That was a bad call. You should have never like kicked me out. I know it's nothing personal, but that was my motivation, my drive to come back and do and do something. So, guys, notifications, likes, comments. You want to talk? You talk to me. No problem. Coach Max, Scorpion Academy, take it all the way.